Um, well, yeah, we have, we have 450 people so far in uh, Maris. Sounds good. I think we are at the point we're at 305. So welcome everyone to the Community Health Planning and Policy Development Section's annual town hall. Uh, this is an event that allows us to um, really come together, learn about what our section has been up to over the past year, what we're looking to do this current year, uh, and you know, get feedback from you all. It's also an opportunity for folks to just engage each other and meet other folks within the section. Uh, one of our goals, um, or missions that we started a couple of years, a few years ago, um, was to create engagement act in activities for folks outside of the annual meeting. And this is just one form of how we do so. Uh, and so looking forward to meeting you all and having conversations today. Uh, let's see, who am I? I am Maurice Johnson. I am your chair. Um, and uh, this is my final year as chair. Our co um, chair elect, uh, Shannon, uh, couldn't join us today, but she sends her regards and thanks everyone for being here. And I'm also joined by our um, other hosts of today, Jeannie Holt, Deja Knight, and, uh, and Ave. Can you all say hello um, real quick? If you can. Hi, I'm Jeannie Holt. Um, I am an elderly white woman with silver, silver, silver white hair, I call it. Uh, and I wear glasses and I use she, her pronouns and I live in New Hampshire. Hi, everybody. I'm Deja Knight. I am, um, I guess, no longer a doctoral student, just defended my dissertation um, at Johns Hopkins. So I'm moving into, thank you, a postdoctoral um, fellowship role, still at Johns Hopkins in the Department of Epidemiology, but I live in um, Oxford, Mississippi with my husband, and I'm so excited to get to know you all. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ave Yakubu. I'm based in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I work remotely at Nurturely as a program director, which is a perinatal equity and wellness organization. And I'm also a uh, section counselor. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Thank you. So, as I may have indicated earlier, our agenda today is pretty much uh, our welcomes will do uh, we'll introduce our leadership team to folks so you can match some faces to names uh, for, for folks who are on the call. We'll talk about our activities in the past year, particularly what we did at the annual meeting. Uh, we'll talk about our upcoming plans for this year, um, as well as discuss opportunities where other where members who are not currently part of our leadership team can still engage us, as well as opportunities to join the leadership team if so interested. And then we'll have some engagement uh, and networking activities to close. Um, today. Uh, any questions or comments before we get started, please uh, feel free to use the chat to have any kind of, um, to share comments and thoughts. Uh, our team will be reviewing those as we're having the meeting. So if you have any questions that come up or um, feel free to raise your hand at any time. Uh, this is a pretty relaxed um, semi-formal meeting. So feel free to jump in at any time. And with that, I will now start our poll. Can I do, can I execute this seamlessly? Let's see, I'm launching. All right, the first two questions have been pushed to you. So the first question is, how long have you been a member of CHPPD and what role best describes you? And this may not be a fully comprehensive list, so I'm interested in the others. Uh, and for folks to share what those are so we can add that to our future polls. We are near 50%. This would be as a survey methodologist, you know, anything past 5% I'm happy about these days. So good job. Uh, and I'll give it five more seconds. We're at 83%, 85, almost there, and I'm closing. Let's see where we are.
Can folks see the results? Did it pop up on your screen? All right. Yes. So most of our members are within the zero to two year framework. So welcome, glad you can join and learn about our section. And to those who have been for more than 10 years, kudos for staying with us. <laughs> Uh, let's see, and we have what roles best describe folks on the call, uh, mostly students and academic folks, uh, but we have some in public health advocacy, community-based organizations, and we have other, we had 12 and other, so if folks can please share what other means, please jump on, introduce yourself, and uh, where, you, where, you, where you come, what is your area of expertise or, or field? Uh, I'm Janet Williams, I'm with the American Medical Association. But uh, when I looked, didn't it show like 25% of us were in the other category, right? Did I read that wrong? But I, the AMA, we're a trade association, but I work in the mission area. So I work on chronic disease prevention and I do policy and program. So it's, it's so I, I guess you need maybe just a category that says nonprofit, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for that. Anybody else? Community health hospital system. Got it. We have some administrators, Ph philanthropy, of course. Good point. All right. I am going to stop this. Thank you all for that feedback. This is always helpful just to get an understanding of who's on the Sherry, I see you raised your hand. Please jump in. Yeah, I uh I actually work in healthcare, but in a tangential manner. So um, I do project program and portfolio management in mm -hmm. various facets of healthcare, from health insurance through community organizations to health data, to pharmaceutical, to biotech, to lab and everything in between. Awesome, thank you. It's also great because I, I I think our section is one of the most, it's a cross-cutting section. And so we cover a whole gamut of fields. So it's always good to see where folks are coming from. Thank you for sharing, Sherry. No worries. I just think that, you know, something other than other, <laughs> mm -hmm. like maybe, I don't know, business or IT or something. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's, thank you for that feedback. I'll make sure to include in our future events. So we did that and we did this. So uh, in the chat, if folks can share where you're coming from, where you reside, um, where or where you work, or where you study, it's going to be good just so folks can see where, if folks are in the local areas and nearby, so feel, happy, feel free to, to put in the chat where you are. I am in North Virginia. Nova, uh, the DC metro area. Atlanta, South Carolina, Chicago, Baltimore by way of Oxford. <laughs> I see you, Deja. New Mexico. Awesome. Lynchburg, Virginia. Nice. Are you at studying at the university, Samantha? Yep, Liberty University. Uh, my, my wife is from Danville, Virginia, so I pass by Liberty often on my rides down there in DC. DMV. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. I'm going to count you as DC, DC Cherise. Let's see. Uh, Ariel, I see AMU, APUS. What does that stand for? Mm -hmm. 
Ah, American military. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. That's some military folks. Cool. Well, this is helpful for our chat. We like to, it's good to PC folks in your, in your area to connect. Sometimes you have folks who are at the same university who didn't even know they're, they're there together. We say, hey, hey. Um, so it's a good opportunity just to see where folks are and where folks can connect. So with that, I'm going to jump into who we are. What is CHPPD? What is Community Health Planning Policy mm -hmm. Development? Okay. Uh, and I would say, I was, I was indicating earlier, we are really at an intersection of where policy and programming come together and form action. Um, we're folks who are community health workers, we have folks in policy development, we have folks in advocacy areas. This is a, we find this is the intersection that really addresses how we can get public policy in action uh, and from the top down and bottom up. Uh, and uh, we're, I think we're one of the first sections to really address the concept of social deterrence of health because we, we understand it how everything is really interrelated with each other. And so our section really comes together to take those thoughts and figure out how to develop policy that can be actionable, um, and also how do you evaluate work that's happening on the ground so that you can create better policy and go into constant um, feedback loop among both areas. And then you see our section represents has representatives from all those areas. Uh, our mission is to develop and advocate for public health planning policies and practices to promote health equity, community empowerment, and social justice. We have a very strong focus on social justice and, and health equity. Um, we're really trying to make sure that we address communities that don't really have representation or, vo or traditionally have voices to make sure that they have voices in the community um, and their concerns are being heard. Um, our vision is a dialogue and action nexus for community health and policy leaders. Um, and so, as I was indicating earlier, we really want all folks at the table to to communicate and share with each other. And it's that constant feedback loop to push better public health across our local communities. Uh, our community is pretty diverse. Our membership is over 3,900 members. Uh, currently, we're at 4,100 now. Uh, last time we connected, we had folks in 45 out of 50 states and 39 countries. Uh, and our longest active member is 1940, and that person is still our longest active member. So we are uh, one of the oldest sections of, of APHA um, and also have one of the largest, for the third largest section uh, for APHA. Always pushing to get to second. We're going to get that catch up for Epi one day. And our leadership team reflects the diversity of our, of our section. Um, we have folks across all of the United States, folks who are in various fields and occupations, uh, come from their various backgrounds, different fair, different uh, stages of their career. Um, we run the whole gamut, and we always welcome folks to join in. Like I said, I came to our section over 14 years ago as a student and have um, been with the section since and had an uh, immediate leadership role, jumping in, helping run membership when I first joined. Uh, being a section counselor, governor counselor, and now um, a chair for the section. And so there are various opportunities to get engaged with our section. Um, you don't need to have you know 20 years of experience to feel like you can participate. And be up 20 years of experience, please participate. You know anybody can jump in and get involved. Um, for folks who on our leadership team who are on the call, um, I know we had. Um, Deja and, and Jeannie and Abe speak already, but there are other members who are on the call today. Please jump in and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Vanessa Rissudis. I am uh, the secretary for this section. I just started this past year. Um, I am currently an assistant professor at Santa Clara University in the Department of Public Health. And I do a lot of um, obesity prevention research. And uh, it's been nice to be a part of this section. I'm a rather new member, uh, learning more about policy and program development. So um, it's nice to meet everyone. And I hope to get to know everyone a little bit better this year. Uh, hi, Marvin. 
I've been with the community health planning and policy development for a very long time. And uh, I am from New Jersey and I work as a senior director at Net America. And my goal is to work and develop a, a public health workforce through apprenticeship program. And I think often we do not, we do not pay much attention to public health workforce. And I think we do need a robust public health workforce and we do pay attention only when there is a outbreak, either an outbreak or when during pandemic we say, oh my God, we don't have enough workforce in public health system. And I think in order to work on social determinants of health and improve, and when you want to discuss about DEIA or when you want to discuss about diversity, and inclusion, you want to pay attention to workforce first. And I think that's where I wanted to focus my energy into it. And I am currently serving in the capacity as a governing council, governing council member. I would like to talk to you all more very closely in the breakout session. Thank you, Padma. Uh, I see our past chair. I'm not sure if you can speak, but Ebony, can you introduce yourself if you have the opportunity to? And she may have a competing meeting. So, Ebony, if you can't jump on, that's fine. Sharice, can you say hello? Hi, everyone. I'm Sharice Evans. I'm the program chair. For the section, I've been a part of the section for a very long time. I currently work as a professor at University of Maryland, Baltimore County on both the Shady Grove campus and the Catonsville campus where I teach research methods and other core psychology courses. Thanks, Bruce. Um... Let's see, who else is Angelica? Can you say hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi, uh, I'm Angelica. Um, I rolled off um, as a uh, governing counselor in the last meeting last year uh, and still actively involved and in, uh, working on policy and will continue to be involved. So hi everyone. Thank you. Uh, let's see, who else do I see who may be able to speak? Christopher, I know you're new. Um, I know you have to jump off at 3.30, but can you share a few words? Sure. Hi, I'm Christopher McLaughlin. I'm uh, part of the Health Communication Matters team, which is a joint uh, project between HCPD and the Health Communication Working Group. Um, as Maurice mentioned, I've just become recently involved, but I've really Saying that should be an opportunity and invitation for folks who've become more recently involved to really take take that opportunity because leadership here is really looking for people who just want to you know put some time in and get involved to the capacity that they're able to and offer their skills. Uh, in terms of my job, I'm a project officer for the Pandemic Response Institute based at CUNY School of Public Health in New York City, and you all are welcome to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. And also on that team is Tasha. Tasha, can you share some words or introduce yourself? And if you can't, that's the case. Um, and I think that's it. But um, folks, thank you. Uh, I said our, our team is very diverse. And folks, well, actually, Jimmy, I know you're on. I know you are a past leader. Can you share some words? And I see Tasha that on too. So go ahead, Tasha, go and then Jimmy can jump on after. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Tasha Ellis, a public health practitioner and clinic clinical social worker. Um, I've been part of the committee for just under a year. And I am currently uh, working with the Health Communication Matters Collaborative to um, lead the National Public Health Week webinar. So glad to be with you all. Hey, this is uh, uh, Jimmy Smith. I served as a section counselor, probably it was either eight or nine, um, probably nine or 10 
uh, years ago within the uh, section, found it a very welcoming place, um, particularly if you want to get involved, as Marius has said, and, and learn, um, and then use those experiences to actually get involved with my affiliate. So I now serve as the president-elect of the Georgia Public Health Association and will uh, assume the role of president in May of, of this year. But a lot of those um, kind of the push to do that and see where we can be helpful all came from CHPPD. Ebony, I see you're on. Yes, I just want to make sure I didn't miss an opportunity to say hello to everybody. Good afternoon. So nice to see you all. My name is Ebony Johnson, the immediate past chair for the CHPPD section. I also serve as our intersectional council um, steering committee liaison, which this section is a section that I am responsible for, as well as two other sections. And in that role, I make sure that everything that is coming from our ISC gets communicated to our chairs. And if there are any pertinent things that need to go to the membership, I can share that. And I have been recently appointed to chair our diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility committee. So I'll be working with our intersectional council and our executive board to um, ensure that we have some diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility policies in our handbook and in other places across the organization. So. It's always good to connect with you all, my family, and just best wishes for today. Yeah, uh, the town hall spawned from Ebony, uh, by the way. Uh, so thanks to Ebony for trying to keep keeping the tradition going um, under her stewardship a few years ago. All right, and now just um, so these are the names to the faces um, that we you know, just heard from. Uh, you'll see uh, representation across from, these are our elected positions uh, across the gamut. And then we have our appointed positions. You see that there's some TBDs there. Feel free to jump in and, and jump in any of those TBDs. Uh, they're very low key. Some of them are pretty low, low stakes type of activities. We just need somebody to be a contact to help lead some of those activities, particularly a social media coordinator. If you're somebody who engages social media and um, wants to help coordinate our accounts to um, communicate what's happening um, across our section, um, particularly with National Public Health Week next week. That would be great if folks can step into that position. We have a day of action, uh, which you'll hear from later on with Deja, but we're looking for a co-chair for that position as well. Our fundraising co-chair, uh, we're looking for folks to help with just run our, you know, keep our campaign going. We give a scholarship um, every year to students to attend the annual meeting. And so we just need someone to help with coordinating those scholarships uh, as well as helping create avenues and promote ways to um, get funding and donations to our section. Um, and there's other opportunities. Um, you may have seen the email from me a few weeks ago, which gave details about the each of these positions as well as um, expected time for them. But if you have any questions, feel free to email myself or email our Gmail account, uh, which is chppd section at gmail.com. I just added to the chat. Um, that's our catch all email across all our accounts. If you're trying to reach somebody, um, you don't have any information, you can email that, that account and we'll forward you to the um, main primary, the contact that you're trying to reach um, through that, that um, email account. Any questions or comments before I continue? Or does anybody from the leadership team have anything else to add that I may be missing? Um, good afternoon. I just wanted to ask if you could clarify the day of action co-chair uh, position. Sure. Uh, Deja, since you're on, I'll, I'll just point it to you if you can. Yeah, sure. Um, So it's really a, a low bar leadership position in my opinion um because um you do it with me but you also have we all have a team usually so what that entails by now we would have been much farther planning but like I said I just defended so starting now um we first reach out to the public health affiliate of whatever city or state um the 
annual meeting will be in. So this year is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And then we'll identify an organization that want to work with us. And the organization usually tells us what a pressing health need is in their city or for their organization. And then we work with them to build or plan an activity um, that is mutually beneficial to them, but it's also something that's within our ability to put on. Um, and and then we advertise the event and then have it during the day during the annual meeting, usually like the first couple of days of the annual meeting. Um, so as the pro as the co-lead, uh, we run meetings. Um while I've been co-lead, we've had meetings as often as like every other week for 30 minutes. So it's not a lot of meeting time. And then we do things like email um to set up meetings and email folks to like get spaces and reach out to folks to get food sometimes um the scope really depends on what the organization is last year we had an amazing organization they did a lot of the work so i feel like the bar was even lower um because they took over a lot of what they wanted that event to look like. Um, and whereas other years it's more emailing and reaching out, um, but it's not strenuous. Um, and like I said, it's a group of us. So it's not just on me and whoever the co-chair is. It's really a whole committee effort. And we divide up the labor as we are all available and have day jobs. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So if you're interested, I highly suggest you to come on and join the team because we we really need a co-chair right and again the, there's co leaders, but also there's options just to join the committee um and to help serve as as deja was noting our community day of action event spawned about 14 years ago 14 15 years ago with the idea that we attend these meetings annually in all these host cities but we're not connecting with the community and so our section wanted to figure out a way that we can engage our local communities that we're attending uh, and so the first event, you know, was in D.C., uh, where we helped, you know, build a, a community health fair, um, in which a, a good organization was already hosting it. But we decided to help with, again, it's a logistics activity. It's really helping connect folks, um, get the get the events together, you know, just provide added support to local community organizations that are already stretched. So we're adding our additional stretch selves to help them with coordinating and planning those events. And it's really just a, a way to give back to the community and have representation uh and Deja will talk about what we did in Atlanta in a few moments but again they, they've spawned from you know working at uh you know volunteering at a, a food kitchen uh, or helping with a community health fair or we actually did some you know talking about Medicaid expansion and its impact in states and so the, the topics range again depending on the community um, based organization that we participate that we um, partner with that given year but we always try to do it in that host city um, during the time that we're at the annual meeting. So thank you for that question, Robert. Thank you both for so, the response. I appreciate it. No problem. And we'll dig more into it again. I'm just going to give some recaps of the annual meeting. So that's actually a perfect timing where, Deja, go ahead and just talk about what we did last year in Atlanta. And Jimmy yeah, so said, last, too, he can add some more context. <laughs> yeah, last year was really uh, a very nice event. We did a maternal and child health policy workshop. So we partnered up with Georgia Watch, um, this amazing advocacy organization in Bo uh, not Boston, Atlanta, Georgia. Man, my brain is still scrambled. Um, and so we had this at um, Georgia State University. And when folks came, there was also representatives from um, Planned Parenthood. So first we learned statistics about maternal and child health in Atlanta and Georgia largely. Um, some facts uh, about health disparities. Then we learned how to put together a policy pitch. So the three steps of a policy pitch, how to find your local and federal legislators, how to communicate with them, different issues. And then the later part of the workshop was built around actually implementing this. So in groups, we put together policy pitches for um, these two issues that Georgia Watch gave us. Um, and one was on advocating for uh, doulas and midwives to be included in insurance. And the second one was um, to advocate for longer insurance coverage postpartum. Um, and so 
it was really informative. We had so many folks join. We did provide transportation to and from the venue. Um, and it was around lunchtime. So Georgia Watch catered some um, nice lunches. And I think that it was very informative and lots of people said that they really enjoyed it and learned something. Um, and I could just say briefly the year before that, I believe it was the year before that in Boston, Massachusetts, we did a, a similar thing around policy, but it was for a transportation amendment or bill on the legislation that year. Um, so that was a meeting in a park with lunch and we heard from different advocacy organizations and folks and policy uh, makers about the bill and why folks should be in favor of the transportation bill. Um, so that's just two examples of things we did recently, but both events were very different and very awesome. Thanks for that, Deirdre. Any other questions or comments on that event, the debriefs? I heard it was very well received. Um, folks from APHA, oh, we were actually recognized by APHA for our outstanding collaboration and, 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 and community work um, at the annual meeting uh, with the Day of Action being highlighted as one of our activities as well as our work during National Public Health Week. So kudos to, to Deja um, and Gilbert who did National Public Health Week last year um, in steering those type of activities and um, making sure that we continue to get recognized for the great work our section does. Uh, just some other thoughts from the annual meeting. We um, did our usual, we had our business meeting, which was very well received. Um, some of the topics we talked about um, was just where we can, activities that we want to engage in this coming year. We're still thinking through those things. I think where the key topics that came across was mentoring and how to encourage mentor mentorship, not just for student members, but also um, senior or um, uh, well-tenured uh, professionals who have been in the field for a while, continuing to get mentorship themselves. And so I think we've taken that feedback to APHA and shared. Uh, I know that there is a very strong pool, like APHA itself is um, quoting a lot of events um, for mentorship focused on students. And I think our, our framework has just said, you need to think about all uh, members of APHA, um, and those who are, who've been in their fields, who are emerging as well as have been in the field for a while and still looking for those opportunities. Um, but I think within our section, we've been thinking about how we can do that um, in our section as well, uh, we don't have any formal program at this point, but I think it's something that we want to continue thinking about um, that we may want to try spearhead in the coming years. We've usually had an informal type of uh, mentorship opportunities within this section. As I said, you know, just being part of our section and meeting folks uh, and the professionals that I've engaged with and who have helped me with my career, encouraged me to get my 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 um, degree, who pushed me to keep uh, pursuing my degree when I was you know, struggling um, and, and helping me get through. So I, I think we have a lot of folks within our section who are always willing to help, you know, be a supportive voice as well as to help um, provide some thoughts and feedback on their careers. And so I think that's how we've operated traditionally, but we may want to think through how we can formalize that a little bit more in the coming years with our section. We had uh, a wonderful social, uh, it was a sold out of, of social, granted there was no, um, fee to, to join, but we reached capacity and APHA let us know that we should not underbid how much we expect to attend our meeting going forward. Uh, but it was a well-received reception. Uh, folks from uh, our section as well as other sections attended. It was a good collaboration. We provided, we recognized some of our leaders in the field in the year. We gave out, um, we recognized five individuals uh, for their uh, putting a spotlight awards, focusing on their work in advancing health equity. Uh, we uh, recognize Sonia Deal, who is the vice president of the community health and engagement um, department at Athena Healthcare for her great work um, there. And we gave, she was recognized with the Henrik L. Bloom Award, which is our annual award we give each year for excellence in health planning. We also um, provided um, our vision award for excellence in health policy uh, to Kashubu Balsara, uh, for who was a did some research at Johns Hopkins and uh, focused on uh, international health and, and kidney care, and so that was very helpful. Um, it was very well received there. Uh, we gave recognized our best doctoral level abstracts, uh, as well as our student after um, master's scholarships, and then we also provided well, sorry, thirteen. Um, uh, 
fellow members uh, scholarships uh, to attend the meeting. Uh, and again, the, how the scholarships work is we reimburse them for registration for the meeting. And so we provided, uh, we've provided funding for students as well as emerging leaders uh, and, uh, and just regular members for attending the conference. And you'll see some communication about the awards or about the scholarships probably around June uh, when we see where our funding is and what scholarships are given in the coming year. But we always look for opportunities for folks to, to give back to our section and whatever we give to us, we try to give back to our section. None of it um, goes to any other private events or anything. We try to um, provide uh, a lot of support to our members for the work that they do um, in the field. Any other comments or thoughts for those who attended the annual meeting? Um, again, I thought it was a good time. Uh, it was always fun to go to Atlanta for other reasons, but it was also just a good conference overall. Uh, so again, I um, just want to note the fundraising pitch. Um, if you have your phone, feel free to scan that QR code. Uh, we'll provide the link in the chat in a few, but again, uh, we're looking to always trying to raise funds. Our thought is that if every, you know, we have over 4,000 members. And so if everybody gave $10, we'd be um, able to hold a lot of scholarships in the coming year, uh, the coming years. Um, but again, if the folks were asking for a donation of $20.24, .20 we every year we change our campaign by one cent. Uh, so last year was $20.23, this year is $20.24. Uh, but anything you can give is very appreciated. Um, again, it, all this goes towards our scholarship fund towards our, for our members to attend the annual conference. So what are our goals and plans for the coming year? And before we talk about that, we'd like to hear your thoughts on what you're looking to do um, in the coming year. And I'm going to have to put this in the wrong spot. Here it is. So we're going to do a Jamboard. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. Pause share, stop share. And I'm going to open up a new screen and provide a link to the Jamboard. One second. This here. Share the link. QR code is not working on your phone. No, I'll provide the link in a few um, for fundraising. And I'll first provide a link to our Jamboard. All right, so you should be able to click on this link and it will take you to our um, our board. And if you can, on uh, you look on the left side of the screen, you'll see a sticky note. You can put, bring the sticky note, click on the sticky note and type, you know, looking to engage member this year. Well, I notice I'm not sharing. Hold on, let me share my screen. A lot of coordination on one end. Let's see. Oh, share. All right. So, can you all see my screen right now? Yeah. So, if, if you click on the sticky note, you can say, what do you to engage other members? Click save and it will. Put a post it note here. So feel free to add as many sticky notes as you'd like, um, but please share your thoughts on um, why you joined our section and what you're looking to do, what you're looking from our section. Um, either answer is fine, but um, we'll take a few minutes for folks to um, populate this Jamboard and we'll use this um, for our leadership team to figure out what other direction we should go forward with this year. So your feedback Sorry. to this is very appreciated. Yes. Hi, it looks like a lot of us have view only access, so we're not able to edit. Uh, so let me see. there, you, yeah, thank you. There we go. Thank you. It should work now. Thank you for that note. Take a few minutes to do this. I'm going to stop sharing my video for a little bit and work on something behind the scenes while we are populating this. You might want to reshare the link. 
I will do that. Copy link chat. Oh uh, yeah, so now it's sharing. Thank you for that note. It should work now. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. User testing in action. Yeah, I'm still getting used to Google everything with this new institution. So <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I'll give a, a couple more minutes for the Jamboard. So thank you all for participating so far. And I, I just added the fundraiser link for um, CHPPD to the chat. So thank you for letting me know that the QR code was not working for some. I'm seeing some good thoughts out here. Looking to get more involved, running about the health policy networking and building community networking, a lot of networking. So that's good. Please build, um, stay to the end of our plan. Our program call will be then jumping into our networking activity. So that'll be a, it's an opportunity to meet fellow members in our section um, and exchange uh, our um, membership team had put together a nice little program for us to have some facilitated conversations and breakout rooms um, in a few. Networking and building community, best practices, policy support. 
curiosity. Good one. Thank you all for this. Feel free to continue uh, populating uh, throughout the meeting. Uh, and then we will take this to our leadership call in the coming weeks um, and figure out how to make sure we're addressing some of these in our coming activities and events. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go back to the slide deck. I hope that my computer does not freeze on me. Let's see. And Jeannie, I'm going to punt to you to talk about the APHA vision and um, strategic plan once I get this screen going. I think I'm back. Can you see it? Okay, so this past year, APHA um, did a, a really intensive amount of work on renewing our <clears throat> mission, vision, and strategic plan. And I wanted to just explain briefly the process and the, and the, the rationale behind some of the changes that we made. Um, our past vision was the healthiest nation in one generation. When we adopted that vision, we really were just beginning to understand the health impacts of cross-generational trauma. And um, we now understand a lot more about how trauma today is impacting generations ahead. Trauma from generations ago is impacting people still today. And until, you know, even if we could wave a magic wand and completely cure this country of racism and all the intersectional isms that people experience, the trauma that people experience, even if we could do that, it would take more than one generation to reach optimal health for everyone. So um, we felt like that was uh, setting us up for just a, a, a total discouraging failure. Um, the new vision is optimal, equitable health and well being for all. And that can be an ever changing, ever um, increasing uh, optimal. Maybe op may, optimal today may not be as, as good as optimal next year and in the next generation, and we will continue to grow in our optimal and equitable health. Then the mission, the old mission was to improve the health of the public and achieve equity and health status. That's really the mission of public health, of the entire field. And it didn't give APHA clear direction on what we need to do to reach for optimal equitable health and well being for all. So the new mission really focuses in on this is APHA's role in achieving optimal equitable health, and that is to build public health capacity. Um, uh, um, build public health capacity and promote effective policy and practice Padma mentioned workforce if we don't have the capacity within our workforce. To, 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 to do the work, we are not going to be able to build an optimal and equitable health for all. So our mission is to build public health capacity and promote effective, and po effective policy and practice. Um, APHA serves as a convener, a catalyst, and an advocate to build capacity in the public health community. Our focus really is on the public health community. Next slide. I don't know if I can advance these. Okay, so um, the new strategic plan has five strategic priorities. The first one is to build workforce capacity and effectiveness. And the, the very brief explanation of that is to build a vital, versatile, empowered workforce with the skills and the capacity to meet current and emerging public health needs. The second priority is to champion public health. We all know how, how much we've lost in the last um, five years or, or more in terms of trust, in terms of uh, the, the authority that we need to, to carry out public health functions. So we need to champion public health to increase recognition of public health as, a criti as critical to a healthy, vibrant, equitable people and communities and promote that among policymakers and the public and other key players across all sectors. The third 
priority, strategic priority, is to advance equitable public health practices and outcomes. We need to advance initiatives on the behalf of our members and the communities that they serve to address and reduce the adverse effects of social and structural determinants and drivers of health, including systemic racism and all forms of intersectional discrimination, and to drive improvement in equitable and effective public health practices and outcomes. The fourth strategic priority is to improve member engagement and satisfaction. We are a membership organization, and the more that we can serve our members, the more um, power we will have as an organization. So we want to expand membership and recruitment and improve retention by increasing the percentage of members who report being very engaged and very satisfied with their APHA membership. And then the final strategic priority is to execute operational excellence. In order to accomplish all these, we have to have ultimate or optimal organizational staffing and infrastructure and governance and funding models to maximize member support and mission impact. And with that, let me just throw it open to see if anybody has any questions about the new strategic plan and the new mission and uh, vision statements. I guess a, a broad question I have, Jeannie, is how, what is the responsibility of the sections to each of these strategic plans? Like what, what are some actionable items that sections can do to help with this, um, this broad um, plan or mission? Thanks for that, um, Maurice. Um, I think that more guidance will be forthcoming, but just off the, the top of my head, I, I would say, um, first of all, our emphasis on um, public health practices and policy is right in line with, with what APHA needs. And particularly uh, thinking about the day of action and the work we do in communities and supporting each other, whether it's at the annual meeting day of action or the actions that we do in our own communities. Um, National Public Health Week, we're a very active section in trying to promote National Public Health Week which champions public health, which tries to help people understand public health. Um, we actively try to engage members in our section and in, in APHA. So all of those are things that are going to contribute to advancing these strategic priorities. Um, as I said, I think there will be more guidance forthcoming. Um, the other thing we need to continue to think about is structurally, we are a very complex organization. And are there ways and opportunities we have for better collaboration and streamlining the interactions among all these different components and moving parts within APHA? So that's the the answer I can give off the cuff. No, oh, thank you for that. I think uh, I just wanted to focus on uh, three uh, advanced equitable public health practices and outcome. I mean, we do talk about, you know, systemic racism and intersectional discrimination and whatnot, right? But whenever we talk about racism, when we talk about discrimination, we talk about between the different colors and ethnic minorities and so on and so forth. But then we don't talk about like, you know, what is happening between gender discrimination, right? Like, you know, there is so many, you know, court rulings and especially with, you know, the embryos being preserved as uh, uh, children and whatnot and the abortion ban and so so on and so forth. I don't want to go into the politics nuances of it, but then we need to discuss that with the maternal child health group. And we also needed to talk about women as a group and what is happening with public health and what is happening with the violence especially for marginalized women, and also what is happening with maternal child health, and what is the discrimination and systemic approach to that particular gender on the whole, right? And where are we going with it when we don't talk about it much? And that is the biggest public health threat that I'm seeing that and as a country that we are going to face. 
irrespective of the color, irrespective of ethnic background, irrespective of all of it. And that I think as a, as a whole, APHA need to address that. And that should come in one of the strategic priority, I think. Well, it is actually, Padma. So um, in that one, there is where it says, um, uh, all forms of intersectional discrimination. There's an asterisk, and I didn't put in all of what they said, but they say in the strategic plan, it sta states, intersectional discrimination in this context refers to the complex constellation of overlapping and interdependent systems of dis discrimination or disadvantage that occurs as a result of systems of inequality based on gender, race, okay. ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, class, religious spiritual identity or affiliation, and other forms of discrimination intersecting to create unique dynamics and effects. So okay, it, thank it, you. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification, Regina. Asterisk. So please feel free to go to the website and find a strategic plan for the more fleshed out iteration. These these two slides are not going to give it to folks justice, but we wanted to make sure that we introduce the topic to folks. And I'm available to ask to answer questions too. I was part of the planning, the the work on this. So thank you. So I want to make sure we wrap up. I want to make sure we have enough time for our engagement activity. Um, but I wanted to talk about National Public Health Week, and I'm not sure if you can speak. Well, Lakumi, can you can you share some word, introduce yourself, and share some words? I'm not sure if you can. If you can, I could speak on your behalf. But I saw you joined, and you're on mute. If you're trying to speak, and I think I lost <clears throat> you. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Um. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Olakunle Ajayi, and uh, I'm currently the student liaison officer for the national, uh, for the CHPPD section. And the National Public Health Week, as um, as I, I sent an uh, email, an email was sent out a while ago, I think um, about two or three weeks ago, about um, what we're expecting for the National Public Health Week, you know. Uh, for the stage PPD section, I'm hoping or I'm expecting that you know uh, both professionals and students can collaborate and participate in the uh, in the week. You know the the outline has been shared you know on the website and also the link for registration was shared um, was shared earlier. So you know for each of each day of the week, uh, we're expecting that you know whether you're student or your professional member, you can. Whether you do an event individually or maybe uh, collaboratively, you can upload them on the using the uh, various hashtags on that is uh, for social media for the search for this section. Um, after which, at the end of the week, you know we're gonna uh, you know for those who you can do a, a virtual events or do I'm I'm encouraging uh, a physical events if it's possible, but if not, you know whatever you're able to do in commemoration of you know each of the days. You know, it, it, it sounds great and, and sounds like a plan. And using the hashtags, everyone will be able to make reference to it even, you know, in subsequent uh, months or years to come. So, and there's always, we're trying, um, we're also trying to make sure that this year is better than, you know, it's, you know, not better, but at least more improved than last year by, you know, uh, having a uh, token gift for those who would be, you know, doing one event or the other, or there will be, there will be gift card or which would be, there would be there would be a gift card for maybe about five or six persons, and also for everyone who is able to you know do an event, one event or the other, we are open to also you know send, give an e certificate just to appreciate you, uh, you know, for what you have been able to for your participation in the National Public Health Week. So that's the that's the vision for the uh, National Public Health Week for this year, and I'm hoping you know, if you have any questions or suggestions, please I'm here. Thank you. And again, this is um, I mean, this, this is an annual event, uh, but our section has been very active over the few of the years. Uh, we put our student leaders on as a uh, on the main coordinator for these events. But again, it's open to students and non-students um, to participate. If you have research that you're doing, 
Um, and we would like to help highlight it. We have something pre-recorded. We'll post it on our YouTube page. Um, but feel free to exchange um, and, 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 and reach out to us and we can help with the promotion of events happening next week. Uh, and then um, related to that, we have a webinar that's um, being hosted by our health communications working group. And Asha, so you're, st you're still on. Do you want to speak about this event if you can? You're on mute. And if you can't, sorry, I put you on the spot. Um, but we have an event next Tuesday um, at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the discussion is going to be about improving health outcomes through connections from interpersonal to online influencers. One of our um, government counselors, Christine Ivory, will be a speaker during the event. But we also are joined by three other phenomenal speakers, and they'll be talking about how to engage folks online and, and, and discuss public health and, and facilitate those communications um, and influence public health uh, through um, online um, engagement. Tasha, I, saw you. I see you unmuted, so feel free to share something. Yes, and I was just gonna mention that we have a number of co-sponsors from APHA sections, including social work, mental health and a couple of others. So we're very excited to have that many co-sponsors. Thank you, Tasha. And again, our committee has put together a wonderful event. Um, and they are, if, you're, if you're interested in joining our Health Communication Matters um, committee, feel free to reach out to our, um, our Gmail account again, and I'll put that again on the chat for those who have recently joined. Uh, but we usually try to have two to three, um, one to two events a year. Um, takes a lot of logistics and coordination. And kudos to Tasha and Tammy and Chris for uh, facilitating the, the shares of it, which we have during National Public Health Week and getting those co-sponsors for the event so it could be on the APHA platform. Great work from that team. Uh, I want to put a plug out there for if you are have research um, or programs that you want to highlight. Uh, the deadline to submit the abstract is this Friday. Um, Sharice, if you're still on, um, you want to share some words? I'm not sure if you, if you can't speak. Yes, you I'm still here. So yes, the deadline for abstract right. submission is this Friday, March 29th, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. If you have questions regarding abstract submission, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, sharice.evans at gmail.com. I encourage those of you who are student researchers or who may know student researchers to submit abstracts in the student research sections um, that I have listed on the call for abstracts this um, year. Also, um, let me see what else. Usually there, sometimes, I don't want to say usually, sometimes there is an extension um, for abstract submissions. However, this year, I don't think there will be an extension because of how late in March the abstract deadline is. So if you are considering submitting one, and are used to getting uh, or used to seeing an extension, I wouldn't depend on that uh, this year. Um, some tips, make sure your abstract is submitted using the guidelines that we have on the abstract submission page for either a research abstract or a policy implementation abstract. Those guidelines are what abstract reviewers use to score the abstracts. So if your abstract closely matches the guidelines that we have put forth um, on the abstract submission page for the various types of abstracts that we have, you will you have a higher um, likelihood of getting a higher score, which will put you in the running for having an accepted abstract for a poster presentation or an oral presentation. Um, one last tip, if you are flexible with your type of presentation, the more likely you are to be selected for um, 
presentation or accepted for presentation, sometimes we do have people who back out at the last minute or cannot receive funding. And so if you are open to either an oral presentation or a poster presentation, you are put on a wait list and then we can reach out to you if someone backs out. So um, again, I encourage you to submit, make sure you're submitting by the deadline. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, Sharice.Evans at gmail.com. And I am submitting, I'm adding to the chat a link to um, a training we gave a couple of years ago on uh, submitting an abstract for APHA, which will provide some further guidance. Um, and again, feel free. We have a lot of resources on our um, CHPPD YouTube page, so feel free to scan what's on there and see other events that we've hosted over the past few years. And uh, I would also add, do not, you know, it says 1159 Pacific time, pay attention to the Pacific time, but also don't try to start the process with a half hour to go because computer glitches can happen. Um, so you want to give yourself a, at least two hours to whatever you're putting to, to get it into the system and click submit. Um, just want to give a nod to our policies. There are, I believe, 14 policies this year that are being proposed, two of which are being co-sponsored by our section, A5 and A6, um, Advancing Community-Based Participatory Practice and Public Health, and the Case for Equity and Justice-Centered Racial and Ethnic Public Health Data Collection Practices. Um, you can get access to read these policies um, if you are a current um, member of APHA, if you log in. Uh, you can access a lot of policies by clicking on the policy tab um, and seeing proposed policies. Um, so I just want to give a nod that A5 and A6 are policies that are coming from our section and co-sponsored by our past or our current governing counselor, past policy chair, Ashley Hickson. Um, we put a lot of work in this over the past couple of years. Um, so welcome your support and um, active feedback and thoughts. If you have any thoughts on any of these policies, please share, um, reach out to our um, Gmail page and, and share those thoughts. Um, we welcome all the feedback from members. Uh, I'm gonna speed a little fast and I wanna make sure we get to this, um, our engagement section. Sorry, we have this went too fast. Uh, the call for, sorry, my computer is very slow too. It's like, why are you moving so fast? <laughs> the call for uh, leadership positions is gonna be coming, uh, I think April, 19th it will be announced, uh, but we have a few open positions that we'll be calling for. One is for chair elect. Um, and I just want to note that um, being chair for the section is a six year commitment. It's two years as a chair elect, two years as a chair, and then two years as an immediate past chair. Once we have you, we do not want to be, see you leave this section. <laughs> um, so again, I'm in the fourth year of a leadership position in this chair, serving my second term as chair. I mean, I'll be going into the immediate past chair. Um, uh, and where the position that Ebony Johnson is now holding. Uh, and Shannon will be stepping in as our um, as our chair. But we, so we need a chair elect to the opportunity to learn about what it means to be a chair. Um, it's a great opportunity to just take on this leadership role, you know, take on some roles before you become full chair. I think I like this process of a two year um, chair elect to chair process, even though it's a long commitment. Uh, it really is just two years of chairship, but in the two years of um, four years of providing support. Uh, and so that's how I think about the position. Um, we'll be having an open call for a secretary, um, five go governing counselor positions. And those who are not familiar with APHA, our governing counselors serve as like our House of Representatives. We vote on various policies and um, directives that the APHA takes forward because uh, we are very member driven. Uh, we have two section counselor positions and section counselors. That's pretty much a, I call it as a catch-all role, but it, it's like a conduit to a leadership position. You help be the voice for us for our section, step in and take on various uh, leadership roles within our section, such as policy chair, um, membership co-chairs, and so forth. And then we have our student liaison, um, and Olakone is doing great work this year, but it's an annual position. Um, and so that call will be happening again. 
Uh, so stay tuned. Um, nominations are due May 8th. You'll see more communication about that in the coming weeks following National Public Health Week. And again, we talked about all these committees and work groups and chair opportunities. Uh, just want to say, you know, you can see this page. There's a lot happening. We're looking for volunteers. If you're not even want to do a leadership role, we just need volunteers to help out with these things. Um, awards, you know, we need folks to help. with just putting together a PowerPoint. We need folks just to put together a flyer for certain events. You know, anytime you have the time and the expertise, we are all volunteer organizations. So any time that you can provide to our section to give back is welcomed and appreciated. Um, our next major event will be our mid-year meeting, which we'll, we're planning for the week of June 10th. So we're looking to put together a committee just to think about what that event's going to be, you know, what we want the panels to be, if we're going to do panels, if we're going to have a guest speaker, well, who's going to be the guest speaker. We just need thoughts and, and thought leaders to come together and think through that process for our mid-year meeting. Um, so if you're interested in that, please reach out to us. And again, this is just a call with the deadlines and reminders. And I will, again, put a plug for fundraising because, again, we'd like to get back to our section. I'm sorry I am rushing, but we are at 415. And I want to make sure that we engage our, have our engagement activity where we're going to break out into our breakout rooms. And so I'm just going to keep going. And... Uh, I'll push it to Jeannie to to talk about what the events are, and then I will. I did pre-program the breakout rooms, so it will push out in the um, when you tell me to. Okay, so um, we have leaders of uh, facilitators for each of the breakout rooms. Um, we're not going to have time to come back together and report out on the breakout rooms, so I would appreciate it if. A couple of people would just drop me an email so that we can collect some of the ideas that that come up in these breakout rooms. Um, room room one is going to talk about virtual engagement, kind of around the questions of in a virtual setting, what actions or activities help you feel belonging, and how do we build relationships in virtual settings? We're all in those a lot these days. Um, second breakout room room two will be the National Public Health Week. What are you doing locally to celebrate National Public Health Week? Room three related is um, local policy work. Share stories of local policy development that you've done or that you're excited about doing. What, what, are you, what are you doing on the ground in policy? And then room four is about art in public health. How can we use art in public health? How can we promote a whole person perspectives in a field that's kind of all in our heads? So those are the breakout rooms and you can go ahead and open those. Um, and people go to your breakout room, have a good conversation, and then drop me a note about, about what you learn. All right, so I'm going to open up the rooms. Did, did a note come out about breakout rooms on your end? Yes, I see a little icon at the bottom that says breakout rooms now. And you might need to go to the triple dot on your screen if you have a triple dot to get to the breakout room, but they should all be open. And if folks do not jump in, I will assign you to a room randomly. So don't worry. Thank you all. And if I don't see you all again, it was a pleasure you all joining today's call. Have a great one.